Okay, this video is going to show you how to winterize the Stealth Camper and also some of the features of it. The first thing you do to winterize this unit, if you look down, here's the, the water tank. You see this valve right here? You have to open that valve so it's in that position. What that's going to do, the drain goes down through the floor back there. Once this tank is completely empty, then you come into where <coughs> the main water comes in. You notice down here, there's a water pump. On each side of the water pump, there's a worm gear clamp. Take a worm gear clamp off of each one of those and pull the hose off of each side of the water pump. That way there's no water at all uh, coming through the pump. Then what I like to do is just run the pump a little bit like that just to make sure that all the water that is in the water pump is cleared out. Now when it comes to the reverse osmosis unit you can't winterize this you basically have to take that out of the van these are just on quick clips in here and what you do there's four connections that come to this unit i'll show you i'll give you a sample of how to work these but these are just quick connections that go in here so you disconnect each one on the cartridge there's one here there's two here there's one there and there's one there you disconnect those lines I would probably put some tape on them so you know which ones go where and that way you can put them back the same way that you found them okay so as far as in the, the pump area that is pretty much all you need to do once the water's out of the tank and these are removed and you disconnect the inlet and the outlet of the 12 volt water pump run the pump for a little bit and you are good to go there okay now we're going to go underneath the the sink and here's the hot water heater the first thing that you do is you would disconnect the cord from the hot water heater and then uh, there's these two silver valves and there's a nut a 5 8 nut on each one disconnect those 5 8 inch nuts and at that point when you take the drain bucket out this whole hot water heater will come right out and then you can there's a, a drain well yeah there's a drain right kind of hard to see there down there that you can drain the water out of the out of the tank all right so then that's done the only last thing to do see this this filter right here that goes up to the ro system the line that goes into the filter at the bottom i like to disconnect that line so any water at all in that filter housing can drain out okay so that's pretty much the winterizing project empty the big tank disconnect the reverse osmosis system take it out Take and disconnect the lines to the 12 volt pump and run it so that doesn't uh, have any water in it. Disconnect the hot water heater, take it out, remove the um, bottom line from the filter, and then I like to leave all the valves wide open up at the sink just to make sure that uh, no water is left in any lines. Okay. Um, the one last thing that we'll show you when it comes to winterizing is this is the reverse osmosis tank in the back of it. and right there that valve disconnect the, the line that comes out of this valve right here and sometimes I'll even take and blow through that line just to make sure that it's totally clear all right so while I have gone through the winterizing part of it. Let's uh, go through a few features of the van. First of all, 
there's a 12 volt plug in right here below the bed and if you choose to slip an iPhone in up here you can run a charging cord so it's in there and you notice on the other side I have another one of those that can hold an iPhone and in that black box there's also a 12 volt plug for charging your phone. Here you have your propane tank. Um, so I'm going to quick disconnect here on a chain holding it in place. Uh, it's a lot easier with this than it is trying to use those little green bottles. This is the sight. Let's get down here. This is the sight line. So this tells you how much water is in the water tank. Okay, so you'll know if you start getting down low that you're going to have to get more water. Uh, this is where you fill the water from a garden hose. And when you do that, you have to open this valve. You'll be reaching... Boy, I'm not doing this too good. You'll have to reach underneath the bed and basically open that valve up. And then you can hook a garden hose on and go ahead and fill the tank. Back here is the charger inverter. There's really nothing that you have to do for this itself, but I want to point out a few things. This line right here comes from the outside, and on the outside there is this little port here so that you can plug in, like if you're in a campground or you're in your garage or whatever and you want to have line power. That line power comes in here to the bottom two power outlets. They're always color-coded. Line power are the white outlets. Inverter power off the batteries are always the black outlets. Okay. So what we have here, when you're plugged into power, and this is plugged in going back to the inverter, this unit will actually charge the battery banks. And um, so when you're on line power, it keeps it up regardless whether the sun's out or not. This is the solar charge controller back here. And the bank of batteries, those are AGM batteries, 190 amp hour batteries. So it gives you a lot of power there. Here's tool storage. All these tools can go with it. There's also the, the um, in here is for the um, tire iron and also for the jack. The, you can see the handle kind of going up there. And then back in this corner is the, the bottle part of the jack. So that's the jack for jacking the vehicle up. Um, these out, this outlet right here is the 110 outlet that powers the fridge and the microwave. So when you're hooked into a live 110 power and you want to run the fridge or the microwave, it automatically runs on, on 110 power. When you disconnect your outside uh, electrical cord, then the refrigerator automatically switches over to 12 volt power. For the microwave, you would have to physically unplug this and, oops, should have that on the, you would have to, for the microwave, you'd have to unplug it from down here and plug it into the top one and turn your inverter on. And that way you can get power going up there. There is a main line out of here with full line voltage that goes up and underneath that cabinet and in the cabinet there is an outlet <coughs> up in the back right there that's where you plug your hot water heater into. Okay and then out here on the side of the cabinet you'll see you have the white outlets Again, that's full line power, and this is the inverter power. Now, to turn the inverter on, this switch right here, you turn that on, and that turns the inverter power. So now, I've got 110 power on these black outlets when the inverter is turned on. Turn the inverter off, and you no longer have 110 power there. I like to use the inverter <coughs> And instead of leaving it on, there is a, a subtle power drain. I like to shut the inverter off when I'm not using 110 power. <coughs> okay, we'll talk about the uh, 
stove top. You lift that up, the locking device, pull this out, and then you flip this over to the on position. There we go. When you turn on the on position, it automatically turns the burner on. So that's how that works. Push it back in and drop the locking mechanism back in. Under here is a selective drain. <laughs> if this valve is open, it sends the water down on the ground. Okay, it goes through the floor. Uh, if we're out camping out in the woods, usually I'll just let that go on the ground. It's just gray water anyway. But if I'm in a city and I'm worried about having water come out from the bottom of my vehicle and people wondering about it, I shut this valve and then open this valve. And what that does is now the water, drain water, goes into this bucket. Gives me an opportunity to empty the bucket uh, and to get rid of my, my drain water. But most of the time, that's the way that I, I run it. We do have a fire extinguisher there. And I can't think of too much else in there. Up here, <laughs> have a sink, have a sink drain stopper down there. This right here varies the, this on the rheostat, varies the power. This up here is my battery charge controller. It tells me the health of the battery, how many amps I'm charging with, how many amps I'm pulling. Uh, how, what the percentage uh, of the battery charge is. So there's a manual that goes with it. Uh, it explains all of that. Over on this side, right here, this is that, there's a 12 volt, if I can get it open here, right there. Is it, so you can plug in a charger there and your iPhone will just, Go in that slot. These switches run the the accessories, the water pump, the refrigerator are all right there. This is a controller, and let me get this thing turned on here. And up above, we have a, a ceiling fan. So now, if I take and I let's see. It automatically is opening up and the fan is running. Now I can increase the speed of the fan. By doing this. Or I can reduce the speed of the fan. You can also have it set up on automatic and set it for a certain temperature and at a certain temperature. It will uh, turn on or turn off uh, if you like. And then again, you can turn it off and it all automatically shuts. Okay, works kind of cool. It, it really works out nice for us. Now, what the way we like to do it, this right here is another, another vent. When we're camping at night, what we like to do is have this vent open and then run the powered one as an exhaust fan on low speed that takes any moisture whatsoever out of the vehicle. Okay, so that's kind of how we like to, to run it. <coughs> Everything is insulated behind these walls, so it is fairly efficient to hold heat and or uh, coolness in here. Uh, down here we do have a, a slide out bin for storage. That's where we put all of our cooking utensils. Down underneath here is our food locker. Basically a zippered area, an open area. This is where we keep all of our, our food. These are slide out tubs right now. I got a bunch of manuals in there, but for putting clothing in there and there's an empty one up there as well. Up on top, extra blankets and other storage. Down here is the electric heater. Uh, when we do need a heater, I plug this in and sit up on top of the counter of the by the uh, sink, and that's what we use to heat the vent. Doesn't take much heat to heat this up. 
<coughs> okay, when it comes to the fridge, you can turn the fridge on right here and you can set it to, to different temperatures right there. Uh, and there's the fridge inside, ice maker and everything else. Got a microwave up there. Um, this line that we have right here that kind of goes from one side to the other, what we do when we're parked is, is we use this at, for two things, to dry our towels, and then when we flop our to towels over that line, it gives us privacy so no one can see in the back. Down here on the front seat, there's a there's a, a outfit sticking out. If you pull that back, this whole chair will spin around. So you can flip it around and it's nice to have a nice chair pointed in the back. Up here in the van we have a Pioneer stereo. It's an aftermarket stereo, Bluetooth. Um, so when you pair with it, you can take phone calls through it. There's a microphone up there. You can talk and it'll go through the system. You can play music, whatnot, through it. The, <coughs> excuse me, the cell phone cradle. Uh, this does have a Wilson power booster. <coughs> excuse me. Up where we are, uh, power is a big problem getting out, talking power. And with this booster, I can talk and receive just about anywhere I want in the UP. So uh, that's in there, and that, you know, that's pretty good for the vehicle as well. Uh, do have an extra key set. Let me think here. So, oh, yeah, there is a, a porta potty back here. So, <coughs> and, okay. That's all I can think of at the moment. Now we'll go around up front. <coughs> now that you have a new battery here, but this gizmo here, when you're running the vehicle, the vehicle alternator will also charge the batteries in the back. Uh, but when you shut the car off, this solenoid disconnects that line. That way there's no chance of draining your battery um, when you're parked camping or that. If you want to disconnect this, this red button right here, you press that and you see that thing sw swing out. That means that it's not engaged. So if you don't want to use the feature of charging with the alternator, you don't have to. I put it back in there and it'll alternator will charge when you're going down the road. All right, up on top, you have two solar panels. There's the mount for the cell phone. And there's the power vent. When that power vent is shut, you can actually run the fan with it in the shut position if it's raining. And it still pulls air in and out. So it's really a, that max fan is really a cool setup. I, I like it a lot. Um, let's see. The tires, these tires are like brand new. I put them on in 2017 and <coughs> we just haven't used them a whole lot. So anyway, I guess, um, Give you a little step along with it there, so you have a step for going up in there. <coughs> Excuse me again, I got a tickle here going on. But the only thing left to do at this point in time is to put the plywood down for the bed, <coughs> and then I have a foam mattress that goes on top of that. Um, and actually, those are the pieces of plywood and the ones on the bottom actually have little finger holes like this so you can pick them up easily so and i guess if you have any other questions on this unit feel free to give me a call uh, my cell phone is 906-250-1233